Hello everybody and welcome to Wheels Stories. Nothing too exciting today. I'm out in the garage where I need to resolve a critical problem with my BMW R1150R, the 2004 model. It's the silver bike behind me. Now in a previous Wheels Stories video, I mentioned that I'd lost the brakes on this bike while riding on a trip over in Oregon. What happened is the ABS module failed, bit the dust. And on this motorcycle, without a working integrated ABS system, the bike's unrideable. You lose about 90% of your braking power. Well, fortunately, I was able to trailer the motorcycle home, but now it's been sitting in my garage for a while, and I need to find a fix. I need to get the bike back on the road. Ultimately, I've decided to convert the bike to a traditional non-ABS system. And the reason is I'm accustomed to riding bikes without ABS. In fact, that motorcycle, the black one further back in the garage, that's a 2003 BMW R1150R that came from the factory without ABS. BMW built it that way. It's a non-ABS system. I've owned the bike for 17 years. I ride it all the time. I'm confident riding that motorcycle and I love it. So today I plan to remove the ABS module from the silver motorcycle, reroute the brake hoses, and convert it to a traditional non-ABS system. When I'm finished with the project, both those motorcycles will be nearly identical in terms of braking. For a quick overview of the project, here are the key steps. I need to reroute the existing brake hoses to bypass the failed ABS module. I need to remove the ABS module and the fluid pipes that feed in and out of the failed pump. I need to detach an electrical section from the ABS module. And then I need to modify the electrical housing to protect the circuit board and connections contained inside. I'll explain more about this later. Then I need to mount and reconnect the newly configured electrical casing and componentry back on the bike. Afterward, I need to test the tail light and the brake lights for functionality to make sure everything works. And then I've got a little problem. I need to eliminate a flashing ABS warning light and a general warning light on the dashboard. These are the indicators. And then of course I need to bleed the brakes with some fresh brake fluid. Now before I dig deep into this video, a safety precaution, a disclaimer of sorts. First off, I don't recommend, suggest, promote, or advocate that you remove your ABS module from your motorcycle. ABS is a good thing when it's working properly, and I can't argue against anti-lock brakes. This is my decision. Uh, if you've encountered this problem, I suggest that you go to a BMW service department, speak with a mechanic, and you make the decision. You may decide to restore the ABS system on your motorcycle. I present these motorcycles on my Wheel Stories channel all the time. I talk about them a lot, so this is just part of that story. This is my experience, how I'm dealing with the problem of an ABS failure. So just to be clear, you decide what's best for you. With tools in hand, I start by removing the gas tank. I follow the instructions posted in my BMW owner's manual. Then here, take a look. There's the culprit to the problem. The failed ABS pressure modulator that I plan to eliminate. Every time I remove pieces from my motorcycles, I grab a shoe box or a piece of cardboard and punch some holes to organize the nuts and bolts. This helps me keep track of everything. I generally pattern the fasteners in sections positioned left to right. For the front brakes, I've purchased a new fluid distribution piece. This part here, with vent screw and dust cap, will allow me to bypass the ABS unit and get rid of the fluid pipes that route up underneath the gas tank to the filled ABS pump. This is the same part used on my black BMW, the bike without the integral ABS system. Time to get the part installed, but first I need to remove the ABS version of the piece. You can see here I need to undo some wiring and remove a component for the driving lights. These are the ABS fluid pipes that connect to the module under the gas tank. Again, they're going away. The fluid hoses here on the right side, they stay and connect to the new piece. Then I surround the banjo bolts and fluid pipe connections with rags and paper towels. Brake fluid will be leaking. It's corrosive stuff and will destroy paint. I also use a sandwich bag to collect fluid from the upper brake hose.
Okay, so now the part is removed. I need to bend it a little bit to extract the bolt that I intend to use to attach the new distribution piece. I mount up the new part, then I go about attaching the existing brake hoses. I employ new crush washers on the banjo bolts to ensure a good seal. As you can see, there are no connections for the ABS fluid pipes with this part. Just the brake hoses that connect to the front lever and brake reservoir and the calipers at the front wheel. The non-ABS configuration is complete. A straight circuit for the fluid between the handlebar lever and the front disc brakes. I will tidy up the wiring later. For the back brake, the process is straightforward, actually a bit easier than the front. No distribution piece or parts to replace here. Again, I surround the fluid pipe and brake hose connections with rags and paper towels. I undo the fluid pipes that lead up to the ABS module. and remove the existing brake hose, this braided line. I relocate the brake hose directly to the brake pedal assembly, right where one of the fluid pipes was previously attached. The non-ABS configuration for the rear brake is now finished. Just a straight circuit between the brake pedal and rear caliper. So, now the front and rear brakes match my non-ABS bike. The same pattern of connections found on my 2003 R1150R, the bike without integral ABS. I'm not quite finished with fluids, however. I need to bleed the brakes with new brake fluid, but I save that job for later. Now time to remove the failed ABS pressure module, this big metal chunk. There are two wire connections that need to be detached at the top, that's simple enough. There's a breather tube that needs to be disconnected as well. I will eventually pull this entire tube off of the bike. It no longer serves any purpose. Then the main electrical connection to the ABS unit, this plastic block with the braided bundle, it needs to come off. This is the female end. There's a plastic fitting that slides out and automatically lifts the connector from the base section, the mill part of the connection. The brake fluid pipe fittings, the four in and out lines, must be disconnected as well. Here, of course, I use some rags to catch the fluids. The fluid will leak from both ends, so I place an oil pan underneath the bottom section to catch the fluid as it drips and drains. After disconnecting the four pipes, I unbolt the module from the bike. I need to remove two fasteners on the right side near the bottom of the ABS module and one on the left side of the bike. Now the ABS unit is free and ready to be pulled out. Time for the ABS modulectomy. This is a big chunk of metal that weighs, I'm guessing, around eight or nine pounds. There's still fluid in the device, so I place it in a box lined with a plastic trash bag. I'll clean it up in just a bit. The defunct fluid pipes need to come out as well. I need to wrestle with these guys to straighten out the bends. Truth is, I eventually cut the rear brake pipes apart and pull them out in several pieces. On to the electrics. When the main ABS wiring connection is undone, this block here, the tail light and brake light will not work. 
One repair option is to cut open the ABS braided wiring bundle and rewire the necessary connections and then terminate a cluster of defunct wires. This solution, however, requires the replacement of the front and rear brake switches. The ABS switches are normally closed, while the non-integral ABS switches are normally open. I bought these non-ABS switches used from Beamer Boneyard, but later decided against this solution. The option I've chosen, which I believe makes the most sense, is to keep the original ABS wiring harness intact. The challenge here is I need to remove the electrical section that houses the ABS circuit board, the nerve system, the brain, from the ABS module, and do a little fabrication to seal the box from moisture. The bolts that connect the electrical section to the ABS unit have a torque style head with a pin in the middle. I don't have that tool, and rather than run off to the hardware store, I get out my drill and drill the heads off. Once the bolts are removed, I open the box. There's the circuit board, the nerve center, and brain for the system. I cut the wiring and unhook the electrical connections inside that feed to the ABS pump. These wires now serve no purpose. As a precaution, I insulate the cut wires with some marine grade heat shrink, the waterproof type with adhesive inside. Afterward, I size the open end of the housing and cut a few pieces of sheet metal to make an enclosure, a contained housing. I use some nuts and bolts to fasten the housing together and use some silicone gasket maker to glue and seal all of the seams. The casing needs to be airtight, waterproof. I give the silicone 24 hours to cure. While the silicone is drying, I go back to the connecting block that attaches to the housing. I cut off the connectors, these guys here, that were once attached to the top of the ABS pressure module. I insulate these defunct wires with heat shrink. One wire is cut shorter than the other to make sure the ends do not touch. After the silicone is fully dried, I mount the unit inside of the tray that once held the ABS module, back in its home section under the gas tank. I use zip ties to hold the casing in place. Then I reconnect the wiring block. Here's a good look at the modified unit installed on the bike. The next step is to turn on the ignition and test the tail light to see if it works. Then I test the brake light and make sure the brake light comes on when I actuate the front brake lever and rear brake pedal. Excellent, looks like everything is working here. So one issue caused by undoing the ABS system, the ABS warning light and general warning indicator will be lit up flashing on the dashboard. I resolved this problem with the flashing light by opening the fuse box and locating the relay connected to the warning light, this blue one here. I pull it out and that fixes the flashing ABS light. The general warning light remains illuminated however. Here I pull the cover and apply a few pieces of black electrical tape to block the light. Removing the bulb will work as well. After testing the lights, I grab some zip ties and tidy up the wiring that I've unraveled on the bike, around the front brake distribution piece, and under the gas tank around the ABS tray. I need to make sure nothing grabs or pinches, especially when turning the front forks. Okay, now my least favorite maintenance job, bleeding the brakes, front and rear, with some new DOT4 brake fluid. I don't get into specifics here. If you're interested, there's a bunch of well-made YouTube videos that explain the process. Just make sure you get all of the air bubbles out of the lines and get a good feel at the levers with some firm braking pressure. Finally, time to tidy up. I reinstall the gas tank 
and piece all the plastic parts, the Tupperware, fuel connections, breather tubes, everything back together. Mission accomplished. Well that concludes this Wheel Stories Repair and Maintenance Project in the garage. I can't wait to get on the bike, take it for a test run and see how well the brakes work. See how strong and responsive they are. I'll do a follow-up report, so be sure to check back here on Wheel Stories. I hope you found this information useful, and I've got to remind you, if you've got an ABS problem with your motorcycle, take it to the dealership, talk to a mechanic, explore all your options. You may not want to choose this solution. You may want to restore your motorcycle back to its original ABS system. So until next time, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, check out some of my previous videos. We'll see you in the next one. Happy trails, everybody.